Got another batch of amount of substance questions here you can test yourself on. So if you want to have a go, the link to the PDF is in the description of the video. So just download it, have a go, and then watch the video for the answers. Okay, so the first question is quite a tricky one actually. Europium reacts with dilute sulfuric acid forming a solution of europium sulfate and hydrogen gas. So we're given some quantities of europium and we're given the amount of uh, volume of hydrogen gas that's produced at room temperature and pressure and we've got to come up with the overall equation for this reaction. Okay, so the obvious thing to do first is to calculate the moles of hydrogen and europium. So we can do that with the amounts given. So the moles of hydrogen is the volume 144 over 24,000. So that comes out at 0 0.006. And the moles of europium, mass over MR, 0 0.608, divided by the MR of europium is 152, which is 0 0.004. So what we can do now is if we divide both of those by the smallest, we can see that these are reacting in a 2 to 3 ratio. So what we can do now is we can sort of construct a partial equation. So in other words, um, 2 moles of europium is reacting with H2SO4 to make 3 moles of hydrogen and europium sulfate. So I'll just put that in words. So from the equation you can see that the number of hydrogens on the right is 6 so we're going to need um, a 3 in front of that so therefore the europium sulfate must have this formula here EU2SO4 three times. Question two, there's a lot to do here for this one measly mark. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out how many moles of each substance we've got. Mass over MR, so I'll just do that first. Okay, so you can see there's the moles of each chemical. So now what we need to do to work out the number of moles of atoms is we just multiply by the number of atoms in each molecule. So I'll do that next. So there's the moles of atoms now. So to calculate the number of atoms, we don't need to do this for this question, but I'll just explain how you would do that. If you multiply those numbers by Avogadro's number, you're going to get um, the actual number of atoms that will be present. Anyway, you can see that the moles of atoms, the highest moles of atoms, and therefore it's going to give us the highest number of atoms, is option A. Question 3 is all about atom economy and percentage yield. So we've got to calculate the atom economy for process 1. The formula we use is the MR of the desired product divided by the MR of all products times 100. You could divide by the MR of all of the reactants there. There's two ways to do this. You still get the same answer. So we'll put the numbers in. We've got 116 is the MR for the desired over 134 is the MR of all of the products times 100, 86.6%. Part B, we've got to do the percentage yield for process one now. So we've got two masses, mass of butanol and the mass of ester, the butyl ethanol that's formed. So we'll turn those into moles, first of all. So we get the moles of butanol used, 0.0845, moles of ester made, 0.0566. And to calculate the percentage yield, it's actual yield over theoretical yield multiplied by 100. So we've actually made 0 0.0566 moles of ester. We'd expect to get this many moles of ester because of the 1 to 1 ratio here. And that gives an answer of 67%. So part C, we're told about process 2, two-step process. We've got the equations there. Overall percentage yield, 93.3%, so very high. Atom economy, process 2, 45.8%, so quite low. Got to explain those. So why have we got a high percentage yield? It's because the reactions aren't reversible. You'll notice in process 1, we had a reversible reaction, and that's going to drop the uh, percentage yield. Whereas, obviously, in process 2, these are all one-direction reactions, and so... Um, you get a higher percentage yield. The atom economy for process 2 is lower 
because you know remember we're trying to make this product here we're making lots of waste products as well so that's dropping the atom economy moving on to question four we've got to predict the formulae of two ionic substances so barium forms a two plus ion the oxide ion is two minus so we just need one of each of those so BAO the nitride ion, the ion of nitrogen, is N3 minus. So if we're combining Ba2 plus with N3 minus, we're going to need um, three bariums. That'll take us up to six plus. And two nitrides. And that'll take us up to six minus. And the charges are equal and opposite. So that's that one. Part B, we've just got to show that that many moles of barium were added to the water. So moles equals mass over MR. So that's 0.11 divided by 137.3 and that of course is going to give us the number we want, 8 times 10 to the minus 4. Next part, we've got to calculate the volume of hydrogen in centimetres cubed, produce at RTP. So the moles of barium we know, we're going to get the same moles of hydrogen. So 8 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of hydrogen are made. So the volume is moles times 24,000, if we want the answer in cm cubed, and that comes out at 19.2. The concentration in moles per decimeter cubed of the barium hydroxide solution formed. So again, we know the moles of barium. The moles of barium hydroxide is going to be the same as well because of the one-to-one -one ratio. So the concentration is moles divided by volume. So it's 8 times 10 to the minus 4. The volume, it's 100 cm cubed of water. So that's not 0.1 of a decimeter cubed. So the concentration comes out at 8 times 10 to the minus 3. Next part, the approximate pH of the barium hydroxide solution. Well, group 2 hydroxides are alkaline, so basically the Mark scheme would allow anything in the alkaline range, so 8 to 14 would be okay. Now, technically, the um, hydroxides get more alkaline as you go down the group, so I would probably go closer to the 14, maybe about 12, let's say. But basically, anything in that region would be fine. You don't have to specify 12. Final part of the question, student repeats the experiment using 0.11 grams of barium that had blackened following exposure to air, suggest why the volume of hydrogen produced is slightly less. So because it's blackened, there's information there you can see, it blackens when exposed to air due to the formation of both barium oxide and barium nitride. So basically we've got fewer moles of barium in that 0.11 gram sample and so we're going to get fewer moles of hydrogen. Question five is a titration question. So the first thing I've got to do is work out the moles of sodium hydroxide used. So moles is concentration times volume, but remember that's got to be in decimeters cubed, that volume. So the moles is 0 0.088, so that's a concentration of your sodium hydroxide, multiplied by the volume in dm cubed, 0 0.025. That comes out at 2.2 times 10 to the minus three. The amount of moles of sulfuric acid used, so we know the hyd sodium hydroxide, so the sulfuric acid will be half as many. So 2.2 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 2, so obviously 1.1 times 10 to the minus 3. And finally, the concentration of the sulfuric acid is going to be the moles divided by the volume. So C is moles over volume. Remember that volume's got to be in dm cubed. So the moles were 1.1 times 10 to the minus 3. The volume of sulfuric acid was 17.6 cm cubed, which is 0.0176 decimeters cubed, and that's 0.0625. Final question. You'll notice I've knocked up a little diagram there to try and visualize what's happened. So the student's been given 400 centimeters cubed of aqueous ammonia, and they've taken 25 out. That's gone into a conical flask and they've done a titration using this 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed sulfuric acid. And they've found out that the average titer 
was 32.5 cm cubed. So we've got to work out the moles of ammonia in the original 400 cm cubed solution. So the first thing we need to do is work out the moles of H2SO4. Obviously we can do that concentration times volume, so that's 0 0.1 times that 32.5 uh, cm cubed in dm cubed, so 0 0.0325. So that comes out at um, 3.25 times 10 to the minus 3. The moles of ammonia we're going to establish now from the mole ratio. See I've highlighted the chemicals. So the um, moles of ammonia is going to be double the moles of uh, sulfuric acid. So 3.25 times 10 to the minus 3 times 2 is 6.5 times 10 to the minus 3. So these moles of ammonia were in this 25 cm cubed, but we want to know how many were in the 400. So we can just say 400 over the 25 times 6.5 times 10 to the minus 3. We're effectively multiplying by 16 there, and that gives us 0 0.104.